<laughs> Let's get it again. Wait, Today on Inside Craft Show, we're gonna learn how to make money with shoes. Well, it's actually a commercial breakdown, so. And it features our good friend, Six Top. Man, I mean everything went real well for a for a day shoot. I mean we had a day shoot to get three spots done, and uh, you know being our being our first time really working together, I think it went went pretty seamless, pretty smooth. <laughs> All right, did you say? You can't mix can you mix them? <laughs> That's Elise, she's new to craft show. She's she's a rocket sauce film filmmaker, rocket sauce and photographer. I wasn't gonna be like, and she's a girl. That's what we expect. Tess, our one female viewer. We have a young lady now who's eating pizza, that's not so let's see. All right, so Jeff's gonna uh, talk to about the color here in a little bit, but we wanted to show the spot. I can't play it with music, so you kind of have to have a director's track underneath it. Uh, the reason I can't play it with music is because it'll get me flagged because it was uh, the song was licensed specifically to that video. So uh, here is the spot, and you can see it's a runner grabbing some shoes. Lots of Sam Raimi inspired camera angles there. Our typical lens flare. Um, we'll go over what lenses we used on this and the cameras and so forth. You see his shoes falling apart. Those were Goodwill shoes. Goodwill, good shoes. Hearing this fellow's voice, it's one of my favorite things. Any new shoes. Our poor man, Sam Elliott. And you can hear the music start to ramp back up again. Anyway, so it's for a company called Shoe Station. They're a big regional chain of shoe stores, sell a lot of different products, Nike, blah, blah, blah. How to do the motion graphics, easy stuff. Watch this lady with the dog there. She's just gold. She just kept walking into our shot. And we're not in an area like LA where, you know, that's kind of normal. Uh, and they do that kind of thing. So who knows what was going on. But basically, uh, to put this project together, we had three different cameras we primarily used. Um, oh, sorry, two different cameras we primarily used. The GH5 was not out yet. So this first beat here is uh, going to be the DJI Osmo. And as you can see, it's just static. That's me sitting on the back of a pick-em-up truck and uh, shooting those beats. The second thing we used was a red uh, Epic Dragon, which you can see the color temperature difference. The frames all are all over the place color-wise. The temperature, rather, is all over the place. The frame sizes are all different. It's just kind of a crazy bit. The lens we used on the red was an Ingenue Optimo, and so it, that was a 12 to what? So it was an Optimo, I believe it's a 12 to 76. Um, it's a nice zoom lens and really a useful piece of glass. Also interprets light beautifully well. It's one of my favorite lenses that we like to use on commercials because it's fast. I don't have to change lenses a lot. I can get a lot of different depth. Um, the lens flares out of, uh, out of it are nice. So it's a really good quality lens. Just something to consider if you're gonna be doing some commercial work. Again, client paid for the lens rental. I don't own that lens. And you can get it from lensrentals.com or borrow lenses, but lens rentals was a little bit cheaper in that space. So then we had a lot of slow-mo stuff, as you can see. 30 to 76, thank you, Jeff. It was a 30 to 76. Tons and tons of slow-mo in this piece because we're packaging it together to feel a little bit like a Nike spot. And one of the ways you do that is just consider the time of day. So um, looking at this footage again, if you kind of look at the DJI Osmo, this first shot here, look at the sun shining in. It's beautiful, bright, feels warm. It's the same thing here. We shot the Osmo first and then we shot a pass with the Optimo. And you can kind of see that there's nice backlight on him because we were very conscious of time of day when putting it together. So that's one thing to think about if you're trying to cheat that Nike look. Think about time of day. Don't be afraid of lens flares and just kind of go with it. And of course, you have to shoot some stuff slow-mo. So again, as I mentioned earlier, there's a good bit of slow-mo going on in these particular pieces. That's Ed falling. Poor Ed fell probably like 20 times. Ed Delmore. The other thing I want to talk about is looking at lighting constructs. So for this particular scene here, what we have set up is uh, it's on a, the camera's on the dolly. You have the natural light coming in through the window behind them. That's backlit with a shiny board. And then in, and then in the foreground here, I'm going to freeze frame it. In the foreground here, you uh, lamp wise, we have like a 300, and then we have a Kino tungsten bulb just shining, just to glow them up. Just really soft, soft, soft light that was tungsten. 
That said, looking at it, I was like, ah, it looks okay, until we decided to just do a take with the tungsten off, and you'll see a very dramatic difference that feels way more Nike. So, poof, suddenly we turn that off, and we get much more of a Nike sort of vibe to it, where it's all about backlight. A little unrealistic, nobody eats breakfast without their lights on, but in Nike commercials and the style that we were trying to do, they did, we're kind of parodying those um, in that space. Unfortunately, that scene was cut from the film uh, or cut from the commercial for other reasons. So then punching in, we're keeping with that backlight. So again, the shiny boards uh, blasting through that window, that rear window there, you can see a little kiss of light. And then I had just a very simple 300 watt with a quarter CTB on the left camera left side of frame. You can kind of see it on a shoulder. Let's look at that one more time. You can kind of see it on a shoulder there that there is a, a little bit of mixed light coming through versus that kind of bluish backlight just shining right over onto them just to give them an edge cut. Look how clean that image is. That's using that Optimo zoom to steal that shot. So in this space, same sort of thing, uh, just natural daylight coming in through the window behind him. And you can see a lens flare. If you look uh, at the top uh, leftish sort of part of the frame, you can see a flare there and then we'll get an epic one. Again, this is using that same 300 with quarter CTB just shining off of the back and look at that gorgeous light. So in order to do that kind of shot, all we have to do is literally uh, make sure that we're just out of frame, mark it up, control your space. Uh, it's not a crazy amount of lighting, it's just being very practical and thoughtful about the lighting that we're using. I could have added a little more depth, but we shot three commercials in a day in this house, or near this house, I should say. So we had to be very thoughtful of how we approached it. So looking at it one more time, you can kind of see, he bends down, starts tying it, everything's outlined. He's got a nice cut outline on him. Nothing is overexposed or pushing any boundaries. It's very, very simple. And it's, that's the idea, is, is keeping the lighting element very simple. And then the lens flare comes in to give him that golden, I'm about to go do this. I'm gonna do this, folks, I'm gonna run. Um, it's about exercise or whatever, so he's gonna do that bit. Um, so then we'll jump in and let Jeff sit here and talk about the color uh, on the spot. We have uh, a little split screen gimmick on it. Hey everybody, um, I am doing the breakdown of the, hold on, what are we calling the runner? Well, I couldn't remember what it was called. Sorry. Uh, yeah, this is the breakdown of the runner. Uh, it's going to be a pretty basic one. We shot this, as Drew explained to you, how we shot all this stuff. Um, for me, the breakdown comes down to trying to make this look more like a Nike style shoot uh, we yeah we do our traditional lens flare which we also sometimes call Nike but it's really it's a summer kind of warm airy early morning glow to it so it's uh, a nice bring the mids up a little bit make sure your blacks are down at the bottom and then you kind of bring your mid tones and your highlights into a warm space and just uh, make it look nice and warm and beautiful, I guess is the good word to use for it. Uh, it's what I like to call one. It's my basic go-to uh, commercial grade that everybody likes to try and go with. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the runner. Pop, pause, then reach? Or uh, pop, pop, yeah, then pop, then smirk. Door. Okay, so the second spot we did was for the women's line at Shoe Station. They sell a ton of shoes, right? Because they're called Shoe Station. Anyway, in this particular spot, we have this actress, you know, the lady's just trying to get out of their house. Her shoe breaks. Uh, she trips and falls. Things go crazy. Uh, the shoe lands in a perfect position, as you can see. Uh, and the same sort of vibe here where we go into the uh, logo and the, the, the blitz of various different things. And the back end is like a template that I built so that we could change things out very quickly and efficiently per their needs. Yeah. So yeah. here's a little behind the scenes footage, Jeff yeah. not paying Parker. attention. Look how long his beard is. Pay attention. There he goes. Uh, so we're, again, Bear. we're on the DJI Osmo, thinking about the cameras that we had to use at the time. Again, GH5 was not readily available. And so uh, using the Osmo, I just wanted to do this walk back. Now this is not a take we used. I just wanted to show off Jeff's beard because you can see this is overlit. Uh, it's way overexposed. It just looks like garbage. Um, luckily we found, we're able to tweak the lights and get them where we need it. In this particular sequence, we're in a bathroom, and again, you can see the beautiful rays of light. We're on the Optimo. If you look at the very far left and right edges of frame, you're going to start seeing some vignetting. That's the matte box showing through. She jumps into the frame, is bouncing around, just trying to get her shoe on, still struggling. Continuation from the closet commercial. And then light coming through the window, again, shiny boards and maybe a soft Kino bit. 
This is something I wanted to talk about real quick with your actors. One of the things that's really fun when you're dealing with, with talent, and again, I did hire proper talent, right? So I went through a talent agency, and they're really not that expensive if, if you consider the options you get from proper talent, right? So this young lady um, is, her name's Erin. Erin is a completely amazing actress, super fun to work with, but she's also like, turns out, groundling trained, and uh, what's the other one in Los Angeles? And, yeah. and Upright Citizen. So she's got a ton of experience doing improv comedy so we just started riffing and having fun on set within the time frame that we are allotted so in this particular sequence you're gonna see here Aaron um, we came up with this gag that maybe she had lipstick on her teeth because that's you know uh, I don't wear lipstick but it's a struggle that I've been told by some women is a, is a challenge so she has the lipstick on her teeth and she's got to wipe it off and again it slows it down the other thing is pay attention this is shot at 48 frames a second which is my favorite way to shoot and then I'm gonna show it to you here in regular speed so now we're at 200%. Look at that. Whoop. It's real time. Has a little bit of a shutter thing to it, but still looks very, very, very nice. And so one of the things I like to do is shoot a, a ton of content at 48. I wish the GH5 would do 48 at 422. It does not, but maybe one day it will. Uh, the reason that that's important to me is because that 48 look is a guarantee of sort of that um, lifestyle vibe that a lot of our clients tend to be like, that a lot of our clients tend to gravitate towards. And it's easy to fix it in post. The post side of that is you just speed it up to 200%. So because 24 is half of 48. And then all of a sudden you have a perfect measure of it. You can do little rampy gags or you can just keep it lifestyle. It also gives you more leeway in post. So just something to keep in mind. Don't go crazy on the slow-mo. The reason I like 48 because it's a perfectly divisible number. Remember, bad at math. But it does allow me a little bit of flexibility. If I need to retime a shot out, I can just slow let the let the shot play slow-mo and maybe draw some more emotion out of it. So the last beat here, she's kind of walking through, and I want to, I want to talk about time of day here uh, in this particular sequence. So we're trying to match everything up and everything look good, but again, thinking about time of day is a, is a very critical factor. Look at the sunlight shining over her and how it goes. And you can see in the slow-mo bit here, I um, went ahead and ramped it up. I believe this is 90 frames a second here. Yeah, this is around 90 frames a second. But pay attention to the quality of the light and how good that light looked. That's because, again, being very conscious of schedule and time of day, we filmed out the house and all those segments and then moved to this new location. And inside that house, it's one location, right? So you think about one location and then you figure out how to tell all those stories. I didn't put the third commercial in here because it's kind of, it's not that it's boring, it's just, it's a kid trying on shoes. It's funny, but it's just not as good as these two in terms of doing a breakdown. So locations, right? One house, we shot the runner at the house, we shot the kid at the house, we shot Aaron at the house, the, the, the woman here. So we shot them all there and then we knew at the end of the day we would travel to our next location which happened to be within seven, eight minutes of the house location. So it's being very conscious of that to cram all this content into a 10 hour day and provide them with lots of extras. And so this is the shoe gag that plays out at the end, right, that we've seen. So this shoe gag was, here it is in real time, you can see it just didn't work. And this is just an idea of and you'll see here it works. But look how wide the shot is. So let's show the, the final frame. So here's what the actual final frame of that looked like. And you can see I punched in. That's an advantage of shooting 4K because that was only shot at 4K. So we punched in on 4K, lined it up, dropped it where it needed to be, and it turned out very nice. So think about your delivery requirements as well. So if you're delivering a commercial for broadcast that only requires 1080p, you get a little leeway. And you could have done that with the GH5, you could do that with the RED, you could do that with anything that shoots 4K if you need to punch in, as long as your glass is nice and sharp. That does matter. Your sensor matters as well, but the optic really is gonna make a difference on whether or not you can cheat that punch in or not. So then we'll go into Jeff's color grade. So we'll let Jeff talk about the color grade on this particular spot, on the shopper spot is what we call that one. Just, it's another one where it's nice and warm and airy. The outside stuff at the end is strictly just they warm it up and match it together. Uh, this inside the closet shot was pretty difficult. That Osmo gives a really weird kind of, I think it was the Zen 5, gives kind of a weird cast to it, so it was kind of a difficult shot to do. Uh, and this inside when she grabs the key shot is another one that uh, we had to pull that one way up and it, it worked pretty well. So, but yeah, everything's just this warm, balanced kind of look to it. All right. All right, so there you go. That's kind of our approach at putting a commercial together. I mean, it, I know it was a lot of information and it was going very, very, very fast. Uh, maybe in future ones, I'll break it down just to one commercial so we can go into great depth. But it could also be something we talk about on uh, our live show. And that's a question I have for you guys. 
please, in the comments, tell me what time you want to see that come on. Right now, we're going to be central time based. That's where we currently are. And we have a lot of clients down here, so that's where we're basing out of. So we're central time zone, uh, US. So in terms of that, I'd like to do it around 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. That would be the target for us. But if you have a better time that you think, I want to be part, I want to contribute, or if you guys just really want to push us, um, I'll let you make a vote, a poll on it. But tell us what time you want to see the live broadcast. 2 p.m. seems pretty good. That's noon on the, on the West Coast. That's 3 p.m. nap time on the East Coast. Siesta. Uh, just let us know what you want to do it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, wherever all those gimmicks are. There's boxes, bloop, 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 somewhere in there. Uh, and just let us know what you want to see. We're out. I break computers. I really do.